I propose to abolish the so-called angel tax for all classes of investors. The angel tax, which has hampered investments into Indian startups for the last 12 years, has finally been abolished. So in the past, every time a startup raised funds from angel investors, the government of India treated this investment as income for the startup, and they would charge a tax of 30.6% on this income. So basically, if a startup raised one crore rupees, they would have to pay 30 lakh rupees to the government of India, and they were left with just 70 lakh rupees to actually build products that would potentially help them to generate revenue. So this was the angel tax. But from now on, starting April of 2024, no startup will have to part ways with more than 30% of their angel investment. And this was a huge stumbling block in the past, especially for early stage startups in raising funds since 2012, when it was first introduced. And everyone in the industry is really happy about this, and it's gonna drive more investments into Indian startups from wealthy individuals, but that's not the only good news that came out of this year's budget for startups. Now, the next positive change that I want to talk about here is LTCG, long-term capital gains tax on unlisted equity shares. So this tax has been reduced now from 20% down to just 12.5%. And this basically means that if a VC in the past made $100 million in profit from an investment into an Indian startup that was held for more than 24 months, they would have to pay $20 million in tax to the government of India but now this number is down to just $12.5 million. And this means that more VCs might now be interested in investing into Indian startups because they get to keep more of the money that they make from that investment. And then the final positive development that I want to talk about here is the 1,000 crore rupee fund that was announced during the budget for space tech startups. So the government of India intends to expand India's space economy by 5x in the next 10 years. And this fund is part of their strategy for making this happen. All right, next up in the news, we're going to switch from some something positive to something negative here. Last week, Indian crypto exchange Wazir X's wallet suffered a security breach and hackers stole crypto assets worth $235 million. And what makes this even worse for their users is the fact that Wazir X had close to $500 million in reserve as of June. So this means that the stolen crypto assets account for nearly half of their reserves. And so that's the reason why the company decided to temporarily pause trading activities and depositing and withdrawals for Wazir X users. The company said that this was beyond their control and they've already filed a police complaint and are coordinating with multiple crypto exchanges to help them recover the lost assets. They even launched a bug bounty program promising to pay 5% of the stolen value to anybody who could help them recover all of these assets and that bounty was later increased to 10% of the stolen value. That's $23 million. All right, next up in the news, Blue Learn, a startup that was building a community of students where they could network, learn from each other, hire talent, and even find jobs has shut down and it's going to be returning 70% of the funds that they've raised back to their investors. So they started building this community on Telegram and then they raised $4 million from investors and scaled it to 250,000 users. So what went wrong here? Harish, one of the founders of BlueLearn, had a pretty simple answer. We've been building BlueLearn for three years and over time we realized that we cannot build a venture scale business with Blue Learn. Even after building Blue Learn for three years, he just couldn't see the company generating sufficient amounts of revenue and growing large enough that it would actually justify venture capital. And that's the hard reality. Sometimes founders are just so passionate about the problem that they're solving that they don't realize that they might not actually have a big business here, that it might not be big enough to justify raising tons of money from investors. So Blue Learn has failed, but I think it takes a lot of maturity to realize that things are not working out and then making that difficult decision to actually shut down before burning through all of the money that investors have put in. So I wish Harish and the rest of the team over at what used to be Blue Learn all the best. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. All right, next up in the news, Cred has launched their latest product called Cred Money. And they're known to spend pretty lavishly on their product launches, but this time around, there were no mysteries, no marketing campaigns, just this post from Kunal Shah on X. So what exactly is Cred Money? Well, it's kind of like a financial manager. Cred Money collects information from all of your banks and then puts it in one place where you can see all of your spending habits, pending bills, and it also gives you insights into to how to manage your finances better. And according to this TechCrunch report, Cred won't be monetizing this new product at all.
Now, speaking of new products, Bhavesh Agarwal posted this picture on X captioned working on something, and this got a lot of people curious. So this X user, for example, asked ChatGPT what it was, and here's what ChatGPT said. And it seems like some media outlets also think the same thing, so it looks like Bhavesh might have just showed us the battery for Ola's electric motorcycle. And it's been a while since we received any updates from Ola regarding their electric motorcycle since they showcased it last year at their customer day event, but based on the roadmap that I found from from Ola Electric, they were planning on launching their premium motorcycle and mass motorcycle in 2024, but this is what they were planning. So what's the reality today? Well, there really haven't been a lot of updates from the company on their electric motorcycles in the last couple of months, so I think it's safe to say that we won't be seeing any electric motorcycles from Ola Electric this year in 2024. Firstly, this blog post that I used to find on Ola Electric's product timeline has now been removed, and according to their DRHP, they're now planning on starting deliveries of their electric motorcycle by the first half of FY26. All right, now let's move to the funny news segment for today's video. So this week, Indian startups raised a total of $65 million dollars which is significantly less than last week's $221 million. But looking at the companies that raised funds this week, the leader was Bengaluru-based Unimec Aerospace, which manufactures aerospace components for giants like Boeing and Mitsubishi. This is the first ever funding round for Unimec, and the company is already on its way to filing their IPO. Then after that, we have Mumbai-based Auxilio, which offers education loans to students. They raised $12 million in debt. And then after that, we have another Mumbai-based company, Neo Growth, which is an NBFC that gives loans to small businesses, and they raised $11.2 million in debt. After that, we have Gurugram-based co-working space provider Incuspace, and they raised $8 million in their Series A round. Next, we have Mumbai-based wealth management platform Neo, raising $4 million, and then finally, we have Ahmedabad based Nukens. Nukens? Nukens? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just stupid, but uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. So that is a B2B marketplace for industrial products, and they have not disclosed how much money they raised in this round. All right, that is all the startup news that I have for you guys this week. But before I let you go, do check out the video that we recently made about the top 10 startups from Tripura if you want to learn more about Northeast India's startup ecosystem. And also, I don't know if you can tell if the video shows it or not, but it is a very hot day where I am in Aizol. Um, and so I've been sweating through this video, but I'm doing it for you guys. So anyways, thanks so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.